Thanks again for tuning back into the channel. In this week's video, we are going to be looking at my interpretation of the Adamski effect. Now, if you want to search this, search Josh Adamski and not George Adamski. You'll see the difference straight away. I'm taking things a wee bit further with some of the creativity in the video, and that's just because that's just the way my mind works. I like to try and bring out as much as I can until I'm happy. So. First part of the video is the Adamski effect and the shorter second part of the video is just taking it that bit further and hopefully to inspire your creativity. Let's dive right in. A couple of ways to select your subject and in this case it's going to be the person in the foreground. You can go up to select and select subject and that will highlight the person in the image. But should you wish to select another way or if there's anything that causes a little kind of interaction with any other elements within, go into object, select object selection tool and just hover over what it, what it is you want to select. From here, once you've selected it, press Command and J, copy up onto a new layer, and then copy the background layer once again for the next step. From here, what you want to do is go back into that layer that you just copied up, use the selection tool, and select the subject again, and then go into Content Aware Fill, and apply the fill that's there. Everything in green is going to be copied into that and it's going to use that as a source. Then just click OK. If you haven't ticked a box, it will appear in the layer above. So just press Command and E and let that drop into this layer. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to add the blur adjustment to this layer. And what you want to do is go up into Filter, Blur and Motion Blur and choose the angle and direction that you want to go. For me, it's 90 degrees and then the distance. So you can adjust this to have more effect or less effect. It's entirely up to you for this. Once you're happy with the final effect, just click OK. So once you turn on the top layer, this is the effect you're left with, but we want to take it a stage further than this. As you can tell by this next step here, I forgot to copy up the original layer with the person removed, the one that I applied the motion blur to. But I'm only going to do this with the bottom half of the image. So I'm going to select the bottom half of the image, copy it up, which is Command and J, turn off all the layers so that I can see what's happening, then go up into Select Subject, select the subject, and then go into Content Aware Fill and fill in the area with the subject. Now that we're back on track, what we're going to do is we're going to use last week's, if you watched last week's video, you see that I used the path bar. Well, I'm going to use the same effect that I did with the car and I'm going to follow the perspective of the paving stones that are coming out. So I'm just going to put in a series of lines following them to get the final effect. Once this is complete, we're going to move this layer above the motion blur layer, giving us the vertical and a perspective leading into it. Now that we've done that, we've got to introduce the person standing back into it. And that's just simply by engaging the layer or turning back on the layer. I've used the rectangular tool just to cut off any of the blurred effect to give a harder edge. Again, I'm still not finished. I want to add a slight shadow to the actual person that's standing there just to give it some grounding. So how you do that is you copy up a layer, Command and J, and then on the underlying layer, which we will name shadow for this, go up and go into image, adjustments and exposure and turn the exposure right down. This will basically just make that black. Next, press Command or Control and T in the keyboard. And 
while holding down the controller command button, just drag the middle pin downwards and you'll see a very basic shadow appear. Now this is the most basic of shadows. And then I'm just going to press V in the keyboard and move that into place. And do remember that this is a basic shadow, but it lets you see the idea. So we also need this to fade away slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a mask to this layer. And then I'm also going to add a gradient to the mask. And by doing this, it will allow me to fade out the shadow slightly. So there we have it. That's the Adamski effect or one way of creating the Adamski effect. But I'll be totally honest, I can't just leave it at that, not after the other videos and the previous effects that I've showed you. So let's have a look at some of the things that we can also do to this. Another thing we can do is add a new image layer to it and then blend this image layer through depending on what type of blend you're looking for. And with that we are going to use the path blur to create another effect within this. So basically we are adding more to the image we've just created. On top of that we can then add a hue saturation layer just to blend it into the colours using colour eyes to blend it into the color scheme that's already within the image. This is just one of the things that you can do. It's all down to your imagination. So here's a few more ideas that I took forward with the Adamski effect. There's so much you can do within the one document if you're creating all these different layers. You can blend layers, you can merge layers, scale layers up, use the path blur, use the Adamski effect start blending in the layers, erasing parts, removing other parts via masks, adding in areas via masks just to get the effects that you are after. It's a great way of exploring Photoshop and the textured layers. This flower, for example, I used the Adamski effect and I broke up the Adamski effect and then went in and changed the angles that it was all working towards. In this case, it was 135 degrees respectively all the way around and it gave him a final image by then adding in the path bar as well and then some layers from underlying layers and blending them through. It's definitely fun to try and it's a good way of exploring Photoshop and letting your creativity soar. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully it just lets you see how quickly and simply you can create your own effective images following the Adamski effect or following my interpretation of the Adamski effect in your own images. Now creativity is down to you and just enjoy what you're doing because each time you do something in Photoshop, whether it's a failure or a success, you will always learn something and you can build these up. I'm really enjoying doing the Photoshop tutorials just now and hopefully you are enjoying watching them. I'll try and keep them short and informative and there's loads more that I can show you as well. So if you want to see more of the Photoshop stuff on the channel, please put a comment down below. Thanks again for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.